I want to start this video with a quick discussion of a definition that can be a little tricky in a way that I'll explain now. So I want to talk about subranks. And here is the definition given in Dummett and Foot. A subring of a ring R is a subgroup of R plus that is closed under multiplication. So for example, Z, Q, R, C, each one is a subring of the ones that come to the right of it. Other examples uh, that we've just seen, the Lipschitz quaternions, the Hurwitz quaternions, the rational quaternions, the real quaternions, each one is a subring of the ones that are to the right of it. And here's a definition that's a little bit weirder. I mean, an example that's a little bit weirder. Let's take the subset zero and three inside of Z mod 6Z. So Z mod 6Z is a ring. Zero and three, this is a subgroup and it's closed under multiplication because zero times three, zero times zero, those are both zero. And three times three mod six is three. So this is a subgroup of Z mod six Z plus that is closed under multiplication. So it's a subring. And both of these are subrings with identity. So the identity in Z mod six Z is one. And because three squared equals three in uh, mod six, that means that three is the identity, uh, okay, of this subring that just consists of zero and three inside of Z mod six C. So these are both subrings. They both have an identity, but the identities are not the same. So this is very weird and uh, Conrad has a set of notes where he discusses some of the uh, issues around the basic definitions of rings, including things like whether or not you want to require a ring to have an identity. So uh, if you uh, define things a different way, then you could ask, well, what should a subring be? And do you want to require that a subring also have an identity? And if you do, do you want to require that those two identities be the same to avoid things like this? So I won't say anything more about this here, but I want to bring this up just so that you're aware that just like there's some ambiguity as you go from like reference to reference about what the proper definition of a ring should be, this carries over to the definitions of things like subrings. For the rest of this video, I want to talk about a class of examples that uh, I really, really like. As a number theorist, these are very important to me. So I want to talk about quadratic fields and quadratic rings. Let's pick a rational number, capital D, that is not a square. And define Q adjoin square root of D to be the set of all things that can be written as A plus B times the square root of D where A and B are rational numbers. So maybe D is something like the square root, or maybe D is something like two. So you have A plus B square root of two, and now you include some things that are real numbers that are not rational numbers. But maybe D is negative one. So then you have A plus B times the square root of negative one, and you're containing things that not only are they not rational numbers, but they're not real numbers anymore. So no matter what D is, this is uh, a subset of the complex numbers. And you can show that this is a commutative ring with identity. How does the multiplication work? Well, it works like you multiply square roots normally, just like regular multiplication. So A plus B square root of D times C plus little d square root of D is AC plus B D and then square root of D squared. So B little d capital D. And then you get, uh, oh, sorry, A D plus B C square root of D. Okay, 
So you multiply two of these things together, you get another one. So since D is not a square, you can show that this means that every element of Q adjoint square root of D can be written as A plus B square root of D in a unique way. And that's a, a nice little exercise. You should actually write down a full proof of that. You can also check that if A and B are not both zero, that the multiplicative inverse of A plus B square root of D is A minus B square root of D divided by A squared minus B squared D. So how do you check that? I mean, just take this thing and multiply it by A plus B square root of D. On the left, on the right, I mean, multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so since this D was chosen not to be a square, B squared times D is also not a square, which means in particular, it's not gonna be equal to A squared. So that means the denominator is never gonna be zero. So that's really not a problem. So what does this mean? This means if A and B are not both zero, then you get some non-zero elements uh, in this ring. And every non-zero element is a unit because you can just write down a multiplicative inverse. So that means that this ring is actually a field. It's a special kind of field called a quadratic field. And we'll talk about these much more um, a little bit you know, later in this course, but really mostly in a 206C when we talk about the, the theory of fields. So I'll pause and erase. We've talked about quadratic fields. So now we'll focus in on quadratic rings. Continuing with this setup with these quadratic fields, we can take our rational number D, which is not a square, and write it as F squared, some rational number squared, times D prime, where D prime is a square free integer. Where remember, what does square free mean? It means there's no prime P where the square of that prime divides your integer. So you should check that you believe that this is true. But then what does this mean? When you take square root of D, that's square root of F squared times D prime, which is F times the square root of D prime. And you can see that the set of all of the things that you can write as A plus B times the square root of D is the same as the set of all the things you can write as A plus B times the square root of D prime. So if we wanna understand the set of all of these quadratic fields, we still get all of them if we just restrict to thinking about D being a square free integer. Okay, so let's assume that from now on. And let's define this thing, Z bracket square root of D. That'll be the set of all things, A plus B square root of D, where A and B are now integers instead of rational numbers. This is a subring of Q adjoint square root of D. You multiply two of these together, you get another one. That's easy to check. Maybe a little less clear is that if D is one mod four, then if you take Z bracket one plus square root of D over two, everything that you can write as A plus B times one plus square root of D over two, where A and B are integers, this is also a subring of Q adjoined square root of D. And now what do you need to check? You need to check that you multiply two of these things together and you get another one. So you really should check that you believe that. And now we're gonna define this object, which is gonna be this like math cal O. So O sub Q adjoined square root of D is going to be z adjoin omega, where it'll be everything you can write is a plus b omega, where a and b are in z, where omega is going to depend on whether d is 1 mod 4 or 2 or 3 mod 4. So if you're 2 or 3 mod 4, it'll just be square root of d, and we'll get z adjoin omega is z adjoin square root of d. But in the case where d is 1 mod 4, you'll get omega is 1 plus square root of d over 2, and we'll get z omega is z adjoin one plus square root of d over two. So it's keeping track of these two things together. Uh, and it just has like a marker that tells you, are you in this special case where d is one mod four? So you might ask, well, what about zero mod four? But remember, we have restricted to assuming that d is a square free integer. So we don't want four to divide d. 
So what's the big deal about this example? This is now a subring of the quadratic field Q adjoined square root of D. And it's this special subring called the ring of integers of Q adjoined square root of D. So much later in this course, maybe in 206C, when we start talking about um, things like fields and Galois theory, we'll start to move in the direction of what is algebraic number theory all about. That'll be one sort of direction that you can go with this material. And the ring of integers inside of a number field a finite extension of the rational numbers is one of the main uh, things that number theorists study. So there's this notion of an algebraic integer and this ring of integers is the largest subring of the ring of algebraic integers inside this field.